Do you see these? My eyeballs, they are not glittery enough. Mm -mm, honey, they are just not there. They're not ready. They are not ready for what is about to come. I'm so excited. <gasps> oh my God, let me in. Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about a brand new brand um, that I just found. So I guess it's brand new to me, but this is Danessa Myrick's Beauty. And I am so freaking excited because you guys know if it's new makeup, if it's a new brand, just something I've never tested in general. Ooh, ooh. Just give it to me like it's my it's my favorite thing in the world and uh, this is just no exception I want to just give you a little backstory on kind of how I found this because I believe that first impressions Which is why I love to film first impression videos for you guys. I just think they're very powerful And so um, I, I want to give a little backstory. So I was going through the list of black owned brands I don't remember if it was the Forbes one or some other one I looked at a ton But I was going through these lists and clicking on websites and you know reading like uh, information and biographies and all of that and when I clicked on the Danessa Myricks link, oh my God, like I saw the website for 0.2 seconds before I was absolutely in love. Like everything about it from the graphics, the products, everything looks so beautiful. It's shimmery, it's crisp, it's just... Oh my God, like it was it was a whole moment for me. And at first I thought to myself, you know what Paige, you can exercise some self-control, like add a couple things to your cart. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. And eventually I had built my cart up to a point where I started to have like a love affair, like a connection with these products. And I needed to try them so badly that I was like, well, here we are, we're gonna do it, we're gonna test it all out. And so here we are in current day with all of my Danessa Myricks Beauty sitting right in front of me. All of it is still packaged and that is the problem, you guys. That is the problem of the day because I want it unpackaged, I want it on my face and we're just gonna talk about it. So let's go ahead, zoom the camera in a freckle and let's get started. Also, real quick shout out to those of you on uh, the internet, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, down in the comments, those of you that remind me to drink my water, you guys are the real MVPs because without this, without your reminders and, you know, the water, I honestly don't think my kidneys would even know. They'd be like, oh, what is this foreign godly substance? Water. Because uh, they only know Diet Coke. Who are we kidding? Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Okay, so a couple of things while we get into the video. Number one, just so you guys know, I am reading off of my iPad, um, mainly because <laughs> you guys know without my glasses, I'm blind as a little bat over here flying around, running into walls, and I need to be able to adjust the uh, the font on here to be, you know, this big so I can read it. Um, but, you know, just so you know, if I look distracted, I'm just reading an iPad, number one. Also, number two, these nails, which I know I will get questions on because they are so cute. Um, these are from Impress Manicures. I wear them all the time. I talk about them a ton, not sponsored. Sponsored. And these are from their collab with Rebecca Minkoff, and this is in the style Ibiza Nights. I just thought they were just so cute. I just love them so much. All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and get back into this. We're gonna start with foundation on her website, and this is called the Vision Cream Cover. It retails for $28 for a full size, comes in, I think I counted 24 shades, and has the option for five additives. So you can change, you know, get like a white one, an orange one if you need to change the base, undertone, that sort of thing. And right off the bat, I really liked that about this website. Website. I like that the foundations and the additives are there. They're all easy to get to and it's just a very user-friendly site uh, But then I clicked over because oh, you guys know me I'm gonna investigate right and I see that it says these cost five to twenty eight dollars And I'm like how the hell are you gonna cost five to twenty eight dollars? Oh, you know how you cost five to twenty eight dollars when you are an amazing amazing brand that offers sample sizes That's right little teeny foundations for five dollars So you can test them make sure you like the formula the color drop the mic please for the love of God, will all other brands do this? Now I gotta set my iPad down because I'm about ready to get all kinds of conversational up in here. But can we just talk for a second? How many of us have bought a full size foundation? Because obviously that's the only option, right? You know, most brands offer one size and you don't like it. Whether the color is wrong, if the undertone is off, if the um, formula just doesn't work for you, it doesn't work with your other products, whatever, you just don't like it, right? Like it's just, it doesn't work. And then you're stuck in this position where either A, you have to try to go through the process and return it, get the right color, you know, do, do all the screwing around. Or if they don't have a good return policy, you're just stuck with this full ass foundation that you're never going to use, right? Like it's just, it's not going to be something you utilize. And I'm not trying to be all soapboxy about it because everybody's got their own kind of feelings. But the fact that there was a $5 option on there to test the foundation, see if it works, whether it's again, color, undertone, the formula, whatever, I don't care. Just the fact that this is on there automatically told me that this is a website and this is somebody that created a company that clearly is viewing makeup through the eyes of the consumer because as a consumer, this, again, I, I, maybe I'm just speaking for myself and maybe I'm the only one that feels this way, 
But to me, this is what we're all looking for. Anyways, I wanted to throw this out there. This is what we're gonna be testing out first. Um, the, again, Vision Cream Cover. I have it in the shade 2.75N, because I don't think I said any of that yet. And let's go ahead, let's read really quickly here. It says that um, it is an all-in-one foundation and concealer created with the latest in texture minimizing technology. Sold me right there, honey boo-boo. Minimizing technology. <laughs> So where do I sign? Um, and it's to model the art of perfect skin while defying age, I'm 30, uh, concealment of skin conditions, right here, um, such as hyperpigmentation and the ability to cover uneven discoloration while appearing like gorgeous skin. Whew, honey child, does that not sound like something I need? Okay, I wanna go in first and test this out with my Sigma F80. This is just my flat kabuki. I just wanna see, oh wow. That definitely is scented, okay? So keep that in mind if you are sensitive to fragrance. So I'm just gonna go through and do this entire half of my face, I think, with a brush because I kind of did this as like a little test patch and it actually looks pretty nice. Like it blends out good. It does definitely have more of a matte kind of dry down consistency. Um, so def you know, definitely something to keep in mind while you're applying it. For the other side, I'm just going to blend it out with a sponge. Um, so I'm just gonna use my damp Tarte sponge here. I just tested this out in um, New Tarte makeup or testing out New Tarte, whatever. I'll have it linked up here if you wanna check it out. All right, so really quickly, I had to play around with the camera a little bit, but um, just because the lighting is so inconsistent. Welcome to Northern Michigan, again. Um, but as far as the foundation goes, like that looks beautiful. I don't, I think it looks very similar both ways. Like I don't have a preference one way or the other. Um, as far as application, the only thing I would caution you on is um, this foundation, I can already tell just by like this one coating. I can tell that it's more of a like stick down type foundation, meaning once you put it there, it's going to want to settle quickly and like dry down. So if you have the option, definitely work quicker. But you know, even that being said, I had no issues. It blended out just fine. Nothing was like stubborn, nothing caused me grief. I mean, it, it blended out perfectly actually for a more matte foundation. All right, so really quick, I want you guys to get a good shot of what the skin looks like um, without any concealer, powder, you know, anything else being added to it, just so you can really see kind of what we're working with. As far as where I sit, I was able to build up a little coverage over the cheeks. And I mean, to me, this is like a beautiful full coverage foundation. I think it looks great and it does look very skin-like. Now, as far as the finish goes, this is definitely more of a matte foundation. However, I'm still noticing my skin like coming through. It's giving me little peaks of light. So I would say, yes, it is a matte finish or a more matte finish, but I do think it's the type that you could work with. That's pretty much it. I mean, as far as my personal opinion, I think it looks nice. It does look a little bit texture emphasizing right around my nose, but that's not super uncommon with me either, especially when I first apply a foundation, regardless of which one. It usually takes, you know, settling into my skin, maybe a little powder to really make everything mesh together. And next up, we're going to move in to concealer. And for that, we have the Vision cream cover perfecting and shaping wand which i picked up in the shade n02 and looking on their website this retails by the way for 21 dollars. it comes in only one size which kind of makes sense given you know the packaging of it I, I don't think it would be cost effective to make this in a smaller size oh i might want a little light on the concealer whoopsies it looks like this one comes in i want to say roughly 18 ish shades and it also does have the color additive option on the concealer as well which is cool and it says here for the description that the vision cream cover wand is a designer complexion instrument created to allow the orchestration of concealing sculpting shaping and defining this magic tool allows precision like never before perfect concealment of skin conditions such as hyperpigmentation and the ability to cover uneven discoloration while appearing like gorgeous skin then as far as the actual component goes it is one of these where you have to push on the end and then um, the product itself is gonna come up through the the little bristles up here Hopefully Come on little fella. Let's go. All right, so it took me a few clicks, but let's go ahead and get it applied Oh, wow, that's really light page <laughs> That's fine. You guys know me if you've been here before I can fix I can fix this. It's okay uh, I could I can do a lot with colors that are way wrong. So let's go ahead and get this blended out. Oh, wow. Is that coverage? Okay. Um, yeah. All right. I mean, was I prepared for that kind of coverage? No, but like, I'm not upset about it. I mean, I can tell you that. 
Whoa, Nelly. All right, so we're moving on to the other eye. I managed to get the other one completely blended out. And this time I'm gonna be a little bit smarter about it. I'm gonna take the excess and I'm gonna use that to shape out my face. So put a little bit down here, a little on the jawline, just to make everything kind of come together. Wow, that, whew, that's a stark difference, but that's okay, I told you guys, I'm gonna make this work. All right, so really quickly, I just got done blending out all of the concealer. I zoomed out the camera the whole bit, um, just because lighting was not cooperating. But what I want to mention um, really quickly before we get into the powder side of it, as far as the concealer itself goes, key points, I definitely think the coverage is beautiful. The blend, it's more of like a thick creamy consistency so definitely keep that in mind but it does blend out really nicely the only thing I will say and it's not a bad thing but this does remind me of the foundation in the sense of um, like when I was blending out the foundation how I said that it feels like it wants to really stick onto my skin like it has more of a matte finish and it really just wants to get where it's going and stay there and I would say that this concealer is the same kind of vibe like it, it you can move it around and it blends and it's not an issue or anything but I definitely can tell that the longer it's on my skin and just in the couple of seconds while it's starting to dry down. It really is trying to be like a long wearing kind of concealer. But anyways, I don't wanna keep spending too much time on the concealer because I need to get these under eyes powdered. Y'all know, it's a whole situation under here. I got ravines, crevasses, and it's just settling in for days. It's already a mile thick in there. So I need to, uh, I need to get these patted out and set down. For that, I picked up this powder. This is their Evolution Powder, and I have it in the shade 02, and it looks to be, at least from what I can see in the container, it looks to be like a really, really thinly milled, um, like a silica kind of powder, like that level of thinness. So Color-wise with this, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I went with shade two, and at first, like looking at it, I was a little bit hesitant because I think it's, go it's gonna darken up my under eyes a freckle, but I think, Overall, I think that this tone is gonna work okay. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just repress out my under eyes one more time because you never ever set a crease because <laughs> it'll be there forever. And then after I get them good and set down, then we can of course, you know, talk about the product and kind of go through the info for it. But for right now, I know I need to get these little fellas set down because <laughs> they need it. As far as the color goes, that definitely did darken up my under eyes. Like you can, you can definitely see a difference at this point. Um, but I don't think it's all that bad. Like I'll probably brighten up my under eyes anyways with, you know, whether it's my essence powder or just any other brighten up powder that I have. So I'm not mad at it. I'm just going to go ahead and set my nose as well. Actually, while I'm at it, why don't I go ahead and just set my face real quick because... My whole face needs to be set down anyways, obviously. So let's just go ahead and get that done. All right, so at this point, everything is good. It's buffed into the skin. And honestly, looking at it, it doesn't look too shabby. Um, I'm noticing like around my mouth, like right in this region on both sides and a little bit around my nose, it is looking a little bit just a little bit too dry. But again, more matte products I haven't sprayed. That's not that uncommon for me. These are pretty normal like processes that I go through in the day to day. All right, so going into the website, uh, just so we can hit a few points on it. This is a $24 powder, which I think you get 11, 11 grams. Yeah, that's not too shabby. Um, it's $24. It comes in nine shades, which I thought was a fantastic shade range for a loose powder. And it says that this is a revolutionary powder that will forever change the way you think about cosmetic setting powders. It it is a micro fine. Again, like I was saying, it's it's a finer mill than like your average setting powder. Um, it's a surface refining powder that smooths, primes, and sets makeup. So you can use it wet or dry. It's translucent, weightless, minimizes texture, light diffusing, vegan and cruelty free. Um, it helps to ensure and absorb oil, sets makeup, reduces shine, minimize texture with blurring technology, and it can be applied with a brush or sponge on top of or underneath foundation. All right, so here's the situation, beautiful people. I'm not exactly sure, like, I think I left off talking about the website, and I'm gonna wrap up my thoughts on the powder, we're gonna get moving, but I just need you to know, okay, off of camera, my SD card was full, so of course I get up and I try to fix my SD card, then my battery dies, then while I'm sitting there trying to do all of these things and get technology to work, my mic fell on my head. <laughs> so it's been, it's been a solid couple of minutes, but I'm here, I'm gonna wrap my thoughts on this, but I just wanted to mention it, just in case, like, color or anything is a little bit different, if the, the room is off, I don't know. 
I honestly, I got a concussion. I don't know anymore. Okay, I can't I can't be held responsible for what is happening on the camera. Okay, it's just it's beyond me. But anyways, I think I remember where I was at with this powder situation. And what I wanted to say again, given that I just read everything off of there, for me, I was kind of in a spot where like typically I know that I don't love a micro kind of powder. It's not my thing. I talked about it with the Pat McGrath one. Um, it's just it's hard for me to find one that really works. But given this one and all of like the work and the it's it. I want to say the engineering that went into this powder. It almost seemed like it would be a disservice not to at least try it. So I tested it out. Obviously, it's on my face right now. It's been on for probably 10-ish minutes. And I got to be honest, it actually does look really beautiful. Like, as far as a powder that has that microfine feel that normally settles right into my, you know, wrinkles, crevasses, pores, the whole situation, this one is actually holding up better than a lot of other ones I've tried. Again, not to say that, you know, I'm like already in love with it or anything, but I just want to put it out there that sometimes it's about the amount of engineering and about, about the amount of work that goes into something. And I just feel like no matter what with this powder, I'll be able to find a use for it because it was so perfectly created. Like wh whoever made this really did a, a beautiful job making sure that there were multiple shades, multiple ways to use it, applications, you know, that whole thing. But anyways, really quickly, I'm going to run off of camera and I'm going to do my bronzer, my blush, and my brows, you know, three Bs. And I'm going to get those all taken care of just so we can keep moving the video along. And then we are going to uh, keep going through some stuff because I still got some shiny stuff. You haven't seen the last of me. Uh, so hang tight. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. I am back. The rest of the makeup is on. Um, just to tell you really quickly what I used, I have the bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury, their new airbrush one. This is in the shade two medium. From Lunar Beauty, I used the Moon Prism blush palette, this guy right here, mixing the shade Twilight and Stargaze together. Those are like my two favorite shades. I think they are so beautiful. And then for brows, I went in with the Benefit Brow. This is their goof proof brow pencil in the shade four. And then with this, I paired from ABH. This is their dip brow gel in the shade dark brown just to get them nice and feathery. And then under the eyes, I went in with the Anasui um, under eye brightening face powder right here. Again, just under the eyes, a little bit through the T-zone just to help kind of mesh all the products together. Don't get me wrong, you guys, the bronzer, the blush, the brows, everything is going well, but you'll have to excuse me while I just don't care this much about anything else because it is finally time for me to dive in to the foils. Now, these are what drew me into the website. These are what were swatched on the main page, the shiny, beautiful, glimmery gods from up above that I need to play with. So this is where we're heading next. Um, again, they are called the foils and they are liquid glitter, lip, cheek, and eye colors. Ooh, yes, please. And I picked them up in three different shades. So let's go ahead, get these out, bring it up on the website, and let's get to talking because my eyeballs, you see these? My eyeballs, they are not glittery enough. Mm, honey, they are just not there. They're not ready. They are not ready for what is about to come. I'm so excited. <gasps> oh my God, let me in. Just reading this out of the description here, it says the same color fix formula you know and love now available in eight out of this world metallic foil shades. <gasps> Say it with me, metallic foil. Oh, send me right on up to Jesus and back down, honey, because I'm obsessed. Uh, this richly pigmented multi-use liquid glitter was designed for safe use on the eyes, lips, and face, specially designed to withstand extreme temperatures and expose to the elements while upholding its integrity for all day wear. The formula dries quickly once applied and doesn't smudge, budge, or transfer. Made with the highest quality ingredients and never tested on animals. Ooh, $18. I don't know if I said that or not, but my God, $18 sounds like a bargain. I'm excited. Okay, let's go ahead and let's talk about the ones that I have and get to swatching them because I haven't touched these yet. Oh my God. Okay, time to open them. We're doing it together. All I did was take the plastic off. <sighs> Oh my God, look at it, look at it, look at it. This is the shade Nebula. All right, let's go ahead and do a little swatchy. Oh shit. Oh boy, did I just squeeze out about a quarter of a cup. Okay, um, so that was an accident. I'll definitely be a little bit more mindful next time. Oh, oh honey bunches with coconuts. Oh my God, that is just gorgeous. Do you guys see? Now, given that I took out so much of it, I am gonna use this one shade to go and do like a full hand swatch. Oh my God, just so we can all see how that would look. Like, can you imagine just like putting that all over your body, all over your face, if you were doing like a super fun thing? Like me, a super fun thing. I don't know what is super fun in this life. I just know it would look beautiful to do this. 
<laughs> I need to get out more. I need to do fun things. But wow, that's beautiful. Okay, so this is the shade Nebula. Um, also, I need desperately to have a makeup wipe because I just <laughs> I coated myself in this glitter, which I'm not upset about. Damn, that's so beautiful. Mm, okay, now I am going to go back in here just so we have a little comparison. And I'm going to give a little swatch of that uh, Nebula shade just so we have it against the other colors. We can kind of compare them. So here is the normal swatch of Nebula all on and applied. Next up, oh my God, we have Milky Way. <gasps> oh, it's so beautiful. It's like a white, glittery, gorgeous, sexy color. Okay, let's take a little bit of that. Oh my God, it's like pure silver goodness. <gasps> Oh my god, you guys, I can't. I can't. It's so good. Oh, I'm obsessed. And then this right here is the last shade, which is Rocket. It's just a beautiful, vibrant-ass purple. Oh my god, look at how gorgeous those are. Oh, they're so good. So I'm just really quickly, I was checking the website because I want to make sure that it doesn't say like, hey, you know, this is how you need to apply it or anything. And it doesn't seem like there's anything on here that like specs a certain way to do it. So the way that I'm choosing to do this, again, because there wasn't like anything specifically on the website. So I'm taking just a little bit of my Dose of Colors concealer, uh, just because that's what I had in front of me. And I'm just using a teeny tiny amount to cover up um, the discoloration on my lids. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of my bronzer through the crease and then throw on a little bit of the gold shade. I'm just gonna slap a little bit of this on through the crease using a BH Cosmetics V19 brush here. And it's not really super precise. I just wanna make sure that I get a little bit of definition into the eye pocket. And I think that that is just about enough. Again, I don't need anything super fancy and I don't need a lot of it. I just wanna have a little bit of a base. And uh, now it's time for the main event. Let's get going. This is again, the shade Nebula. And I think for me, I just wanna put a little on my finger, like the tiniest amount because this is pretty rich. And I'm just gonna pop it right there oh it's so shiny my first initial reaction to this is when you're applying it to your lid something to keep in mind um this doesn't come out and apply to the lid the same way that it does in swatch for example i think in all three of these swatches from one to the next it has a very opaque look to it like it just looks really rich but when you go to apply it to your eye it's really not like that it's more of um a liquid glitter, which is exactly what it's specced as. Um, but you do have to build it up if you want that level of like depth, like if you want that much intensity to it. Now for this side over here, I'm using it with a brush. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm building up the little layers, but I'm, um, instead of going in with my finger, I'm trying to manipulate the product with a brush. This is just a Luxie 213 eye shading brush. All right, so both eyes are done. They're both beautiful, shimmery. I just took it kind of all over. I blended it in with the bronzer just to make it look like a really nice overall shimmery look. And as far as application goes, whether it's brush or finger, I think they were both pretty easy, very consistent from one to the next. The only thing that I will say as far as application, I felt like it was a little bit easier to build it up with a brush because the product itself does kind of stick to your fingers. So something to keep in mind um, for myself personally, I would actually probably use a brush in the future, which is good to know. Now in the center of the eye, I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of the shade Milky Way just to give it a little bit more pizzazzle. <gasps> oh, you see that? Oh my God, that's beautiful. <gasps> but a few things I do wanna mention in terms of application, obviously I already mentioned whether it's a finger or a brush, they both apply about the same, um, which is nice. I do prefer the brush ever so slightly just because like I said, it doesn't really stick to your fingers, but uh, nothing was patchy. There was no issues there. It didn't get like crackly and you know fall apart, make my eyelid get all funky, none of that. And I also really like the buildable part of this product. I feel like it's a lot more versatile. If you're wanting to use it, whether it's like on like your body or on a lipstick, on your eyes, whatever. I feel like you can really choose if you want a glitter veil, like if you want it to be more light and sparkly, or if you want it to be something like this that's more dense and intense, you have that option as well, which is really cool. All right, now from here, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the next product, which is their Vision Flush, retails for $20. And this one I was a little bit unsure of, so I'm putting it here, and then we're gonna get into highlight and kind of talk about it all at once. And in the description, it says that this is a unique waterproof multi-purpose formula that provides a wash of color with a satin or semi-matte finish 
that can be used on the eyes, lips, and cheeks. And then down in like their bulleted, it says soft buildable coverage, highly pigmented, smooths the appearance of pores and fine lines, thank God. Uh, long wear, waterproof, finger friendly, and moisturizing. And then for shades, it looks like it comes in 12 different options. I have the lightest, which is Tiara. But I do like the fact that there are so many different color options because there, you know, you could use it for anything, a lipstick, a highlight on the eyes, you know, kind of whatever you feel like is what you can do. But because I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted to go in today's video, whether it was using it on the eyes, on the lips, the cheekbones, you know, I, I wasn't really sure. Um, I'm gonna pause it right here with this product. Again, I swatched it, we talked about it, but I'm gonna pause it because I still wanna get over into highlight, talk about the palette, and then we can kind of mix everything together between this and this and kind of finish off the face, which does, like I said, lead us into here. And I'm gonna start going through the website and talking about this little fella. Well, <laughs> it's a big fella, but this is their light work palette retailing for $42. And it says it is a light shaping highlighter palette. Um, it comes with six, it's a six piece multi-tonal palette. It is designed to lift, shape, and highlight while adding soft, subtle dimension to the face. It is a lightweight, soft, creamy powder formula that is infused with micro light refracting pearls that amplify your natural radiance while offering a sophisticated lit from within glow. And it says that it is creamy, buildable, soft luminosity, long wearing, vegan and cruelty free. The palette itself does come in two options. There is light work one, which is what I have. And then there's light work two. Also, I love that the outside box matches this. Like this is so beautiful. It's so bright and reflective. Oh my God, these pans are gigantic too. Look at that. Holy shit, guys, the overall construction of this feels so good. Like I, I was looking to see if there was anything else I could compare it to, but it feels so heavy, like it's so hefty, it's weighted. It feels like a good quality. All right, guys, so it took me a hot second to figure out what to do because I pretty much lost all sun outside, but I still wanted to zoom in and give you guys a good shot of the, uh, the entire highlight palette because I think these colors are so beautiful. And this color, even though it won't work obviously for my skin tone as a highlight, I feel like that is such a beautiful, like intense shade. And it's a, it's very unique, like the undertone is different. I really, really like that. Oh my God. Now for me, anytime I go in with highlight, I like to give my face a full spritz of setting spray just to give all of my all of my layers a chance to really mesh together. So I'm gonna go in with a little ABH dewy set spray here. Just give it a good little dusting. So really quickly, while I've been sitting here letting this dry in, I was just noticing um, this right here, the Vision Flush in the shade Tiara. It did oxidize a little bit um, on my skin. So I think what I'm gonna do for this Again, given that it oxidized, I'm not gonna use this as a highlight. I think I'll use it maybe on my lips, like with a lipstick or something, just so I can still get a feel for the consistency without um, putting it underneath of my um, of my highlight. But I will try it on the lips, and you know we'll kind of go from there, and you know still work with the consistency. But moving into my highlight, I am gonna take a Wayne Goss O2 brush, and I am going to apply. Let me see here, what colors? I think I'm gonna start off actually with the first two, which is like duh and common and sense. I'm going to mix those two shades together here. I'm going to start off on this cheek and we're just going to ever so lightly kind of veil that area. Ooh, oh, that's beautiful. And that's actually like the perfect combination too. Ooh, I like that. I like how workable that is. I think from there, now that I have like a good dusting and coating of that mixture, I want to go in with a little bit of Piece of Cake, which is this lighter pink shade right here. And I just want to play around with that a little just because it's beautiful. <laughs> and honestly, I can't help myself. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and just kind of dust it right over top of that highlight, just ever so gently, just to give it a little bit of a pinky hue. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I really like that. And I'm also taking that first combination, the, the gold and the white, and I'm doing a little brow bone and inner eye highlight just to give me that little extra pop. You guys know I love it so much. Now, I don't know if that's coming off on camera nearly as beautiful as it's coming off in real life, but that is the most like stunning, natural, but still beaming highlight. Like it really does give you a very like lit from within glow. All right, you guys, so really quickly, I just ran off of camera because I wanted to play around with lip combinations. And what I wanted more so was something nude, but for some reason I tried like a pinky lipstick and I just didn't like it. So I wiped that off, but you can still see a little bit of pink undertone, which it doesn't bother me. I'm gonna cover it up anyways. Uh, but just so you know, if it looks a little pink, that's why. The main thing that I went in with is this little guy from ColourPop. This is one of their lippy pencils in the shade BFF3. So it's more 
more of just like a nude brown color. And I wanna take over top of that and test out this Vision Flush in the shade Tiara. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of it here and just kinda, ooh, that's beautiful. I'm just gonna pop it in the center and then kinda work it in. All right, so this is a very different feeling from what I thought it was gonna be. Like it has more of a, an, um, kind of like an oily slip to it. And now that I felt it, by the way, the consistency is beautiful. Like there's no issue there. But in terms of a lip product for me, I think if, if this is the consistency this is, I would probably go with a gloss just because I, I feel like it, a gloss for me is a little bit more comfortable. You guys know I'm super sensitive with textures. But now that I've applied it to my face and I can actually feel that consistency, I think this would be best used either under my foundation as like a glowy from within, almost like a primer type product or over top of my foundation as a liquid highlight. I think either one of those would be great. But for me, I think on the lids, because I have more oily eyelids, I feel like it would move around a little bit too much for my lids. And again, in terms of lips, it's just not exactly what I would reach for. But I do think, you know, going forward, I definitely think either cream highlight over my foundation or a glowy from within kind of like primer type situation up here. I think it would work great for that. Really quickly, you guys, I am going to run off. I'm going to do my mask mascara, put on a different lip, and I will be right back. And all right, beautiful people, with that, the rest of the face is on, and I think we should start off with the up close. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that up for you guys, and I'll kind of talk along with you and give you some thoughts. As far as complexion goes, obviously on camera, it looks beautiful. I think like the coverage, the finish of it, all of it looks very, very nice. It's reflecting beautifully. The issue that I'm having, again, I don't think it shows up on camera too much, is around my mouth and around my nose area, I am noticing a lot more of like, like that dry, that kind of matte settling in type finish. And I think it's more so just because as I've shifted from oily leaning combo type skin, my skin isn't as uh, workable with matte foundations like it used to be. Well, hello, beautiful people. Editing page here. I wanted to stop on super quickly and go over a couple of things um, about this foundation and just how everything wore. So the first thing we're going to touch on is the foundation, obviously, and how the entire complexion wore. And I'm actually pretty happy with it, but I can tell a few things right off the bat. So number one, I can tell that this foundation is actually much more workable than it seems. And what I mean by that is I, I think going in and changing the primer aspect of it, giving it a little bit more um, dew or even giving it like a little burst of a setting spray before application, I think that would help soften up the um, like the dryness and the texture around my mouth because as it wore, this did eventually fade away and it actually wore quite nicely. Um, at this point, I've been wearing it, I want to say for just over eight, no, actually closer to nine hours. So I, I was able to get a pretty good wear test on it. And um, this area did fade, which again, kind of tells me that once the natural oils and, and that whole thing comes through, that does make a difference. Now, one issue that I've noticed getting progressively worse throughout the day is the transfer that I'm getting, like just touching my skin. Skin, like at all, like touching my face in anywhere, whether I'm oily or not in that area. Um, I'm noticing that I'm getting a lot of transfer from my skin. Like my foundation is just lifting very quickly. And I think whether it's that, you know, the basic breaking up around the nose or even my under eye, like the concealer not really wanting to set. I actually have a lot of creases like down in this region. Um, all of that to me is attributed to the setting powder. Now that doesn't mean that the setting powder is bad necessarily. I think, I think it's still a really nice powder. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's my big old fat hand. Um, I'm just, this is just a little phone update for you. Um, but I, I think it's not necessarily, um, indicative of a bad powder. I think it's more so, as I've said a thousand times with my skin, my texture, I need a more robust powder. So what I would do is go in and probably adjust the primer a little bit, give it a little bit more dew, a little bit more, not even necessarily dewy, but just give it a little bit more glow factor to it. Then go in, I could use the same primer or the same foundation, the same um, concealer. But when it comes to the powder, I would also switch that up and make it a little bit more, I'm thinking maybe like Hourglass Veil, Maybelline Fit Me, anything in that direction just so it's not so micro fine and I think that that would make a huge difference with the um, not only the longevity aspect but also with the like under eye setting and that sort of thing so I would probably replace the powder with like I said the hourglass or the Maybelline and then with this powder which I think is called the evolution powder I would actually use that as more of a finishing powder and use that to kind of buff it into my skin like buff over top of it just to smooth and I think that that would actually be a perfect um, use for 
it because as I was going through and watching this footage, my skin looks incredibly like blurred and beautiful right after I got done with powder. Like it was, it was super impressive. So for me, I, I, I think just mixing around a couple of things would make a big difference. And then from there, just as a little update on the other products, the highlight wore absolutely beautiful in this light. You can't, <laughs> you can't hardly see anything, but the highlight wore really nicely. And I think the star of the show, what really impressed me were these glitters that I had all over the eyes because typically for me, I have more oily eyelids and you guys know stuff breaks apart on my lids like crazy. And these really did stay put. Like they are there. They're not cracked. They're not feathering off. They're not chunking off. And just like the overall for me on the wear side of it was a big, big win. So again, I think overall, like my experience with the brand was beautiful. I don't have anything really to complain about. Um, I just think it would be more of like mixing up the products to make sure that I could use them in the way that best works for my skin, which is, you know, common for any brand, any product, what have you. So uh, yeah, that, that's my update. Longevity was good, good wear test. And overall, I'm definitely not upset. I do think though, um, by the way, my chest has just been so red today. I, it's, it looked red on camera too. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. Like I'm not sunburned or anything. I'm just naturally, I guess I'm anxious today, which <laughs> big surprise. Um, but yeah, overall good wear test, good everything. I do think I might adjust the shade of foundation going forward because the shade was a little bit dark for me. I don't know if you noticed. Um, but yeah, other than that, all is well and good and pretty positive wear test. That you guys, the video is done and complete. Please be sure to let me know all of your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. If you like the video, if you like checking out new brands, just all of your thoughts and opinions, leave them down in the comments. Um, per usual, if you haven't checked me out yet on Instagram or on Twitter, they will both be linked down in the description. I, I'm pretty active these days over on Instagram. So if you're looking for more fun content, uh, this weekend I was hanging out, my mom was making cakes. So naturally I was a nuisance in the kitchen. I was testing uh, frosting on various various other foods and just goofing off. So if that's your kind of thing and you like to just, you know, have have that fun and you want to have a little bit more of my day-to-day -day life, definitely check me out over on Instagram. But above all else, if you haven't done so, please subscribe before you leave. I put up three new videos a week, or at least I try to. I'm working on it. <laughs> Things are a little bit hectic right now. Uh, but they typically go up Monday, Wednesday, Friday around 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. And you guys, that is everything. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have an amazing day night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs> Why does my nose itch? Uh, I have a cat hair on my nose. I repeat, I have cat hair on my nose. I love you, baby. You know it's quite alright on you. Trust in me when I say. And, uh, fucking, hello? What are you doing? Right, what are you eating? No. I mean, yes, but no. Well, I want to know why you're here. What? Who said you could come home? What? What?